No worries. Okay, I have started recording again. We are still poking at um, collision course and uh, the situation where two POV characters, Snarly and uh, uh, and the scribe, a scribe, uh, are trying to find out something about some people, and then they start finding them dead. Uh huh. Dead. 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 Uh, and this, uh, we didn't discuss it earlier, but uh, I was thinking like what kind of place could it be uh, where their first uh, quote-unquote target uh, has lived. Like is it, uh, is it the planet, is it the moon, is it station, is it a space habitat? Uh, in in my head, I was thinking a sort of Takanai sort of place, mm. but uh, we're already going to be visiting a Takanai like place in taking flight, so I don't really want to keep reusing that same setting. Uh, well, but we can use the sort of uh, general sentiment that it is a home mm. world, but it is not one of the. Uh, main civilization's main worlds, like it could be some sort of slightly shittier, maybe non non optimal. Yeah, or planet moon or a moon sort of thing. Mm -hmm. so it's just settlement on that planet or moon. Maybe this is the. Uh, no, I don't want to get into talk about resources or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think let's leave the specifics for some other time, but right now let's just try to capture the flavor. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking just a sort of limited number of people at this settlement, not like, not, we're not talking hundreds mm -hmm. or thousands, we're probably just talking maybe maybe just below a hundred, at mm. max, I think it's about a hundred Um Oh look, I'm getting into specifics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's... I imagine it's probably a place where, where people might go if they want to hide, potentially. So, or just live a quiet life. I'm thinking... Yeah, uh... I don't know... I mean, pretty much every place can be where people can hide and, and live quietly, so like... Hmm. Uh, basically, uh, what I'm thinking is, this place uh, should be in stark contrast uh, with Archaeos 4's cities. So, th that, that's, that's a useful marker, I think. Uh, as for the specific number of people, uh, yeah, I think let's let's leave that because I I don't think you realize how little a hundred people really is. Uh huh. So it's like uh, let's 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 leave it for now and 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 figure the specifics out later. But yeah, uh, it is. Whatever the place is, so for for the place for a placeholder's sake, uh, let's say uh, it is uh, it is a moon around some. It could be a moon around some better known homeworld. Uh, and uh, I think it should be uh, suboptimal in some way, but very comfy or very sort of lucrative in other ways. So it's like may maybe the climate is is a tad too hot or a tad too cold, but at the same time. Uh, the life is very rich, or uh, 
or, or, or maybe there are certain, I don't know, may, maybe, maybe it has, uh, I'm, I'm gonna borrow from, uh, from Ekurana, Ekurana's moon now, uh, maybe it has, uh, no, non-sufficient magnetic field which means the uh, star radiation, the cosmic radiation, uh, would be greater. Which means only uh, only people who have certain protection or certain augments uh, feel good there. Or inversely, it could have a very strong magnetic field, which interferes with technology or, or certain technology. Uh, and which interferes with uh, 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 with the direct uh, radio signals, which means uh, certain communications are are either a hassle or require more effort and, and boosters and such. In fact, <laughs> in fact, we can use uh, Ekurana itself. I mean, we can use the uh, bigger moon of oh, Ekurana, okay. and we can use its uh, its planet side, uh, which is like uh, mostly mostly oceans and arch archipelagos. Uh, so in this case, I can give you exactly the, uh, uh, the I, uh, I can give you a profile on that. <laughs> <coughs> so the Ekurana second moon, point one, it has a very, uh, a very strong magnetic field, which, uh, which does interfere with the, uh, uh, with direct signals and uh, and electronics, I'm guessing not with all electronics, but like the old style, the kind of electronics that we can, that our age people can uh, uh, can understand this electronics. So, so for example, if you have some synthetic uh, neural tissue and like more high tech technologies, it would be okay. But if you're relying on uh, on like copper wire and such, uh, then you're in trouble. So yeah, anyway, uh, strong magnetic field, which uh, which can interfere with technology uh, and uh, can interfere uh, with uh, uh, signals and such. It also has a very oxygen-rich uh, atmosphere, uh, which means uh, a greater fire hazard. And at the same time, uh, the life is very rich there, uh, very rich and diverse. And uh, with our guys, uh, we are not going to the backside of the moon or the farther side, uh, with all the mountains and plateaus and <coughs> secret places. Uh, uh, however, uh, these guys uh, would visit uh, the planet side of the moon, uh, which is uh, mostly ocean, uh, maybe some peninsulars and, uh, and archipelagos, uh, and uh, the mm, sort of industrial uh, industrial and uh, what's the word agricultural stuff would be mostly underwater uh, farms and such interesting mm -hmm. also uh, because from uh, certain point of view, this is the future, uh, they would also be able to witness uh, how some parts of the planet uh, 
uh, have been devastated uh, by uh, orbital strikes and heavy warfare. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. So <laughs> I can I can uh, foreshadow slash uh, slip in certain uh, uh, certain information about stuff that I already know about. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, regarding the uh, reality tree. I don't even know if this uh, if this reality is backward or forward in relation to uh, Smith's home reality. Now I think this one is is uh, even more quote unquote in future compared to hers. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, the bigger moon of Ekurana are its its planet side climate would be quite mild and uh, and and rather pleasant. Uh, and I would think that uh, th there is some of this I haven't fully figured out yet. Like, uh, I am currently uh, working on some climate details of it because uh, uh, the sequel story for the base camp story takes place in the warm season uh, on the backside of the moon. And uh, I, I've been trying to figure out how the winds work there and, and that, sort of, that sort of thing. And uh, I think that uh, when there's a season change uh, in in that when the mm, when the warm season moves over from the ocean side to the mountain side, essentially, uh, then there would be a a short season of hurricanes and like uh, when when the winds sort of change direction in the big scale there there would be like a stormy season uh, twice in the moon year but uh, but I, I I haven't figured out the details so so basically that for now let's let's just stay, say that uh, the ocean side of that moon is pretty pleasant and also underwater settlements there would be beach settlements as well and uh, the people who live on ground uh, would either have to have uh, they would either have to have uh, airtight uh, houses or like basically they, they have to take into account that the external air make uh, makes for a great fire hazard so I would think that the interiors are sealed off uh, and the interior air is more regulated uh, and people might even uh, wear some sort of uh, like their, their clothing would would also have to reflect that there is a great fire hazard all the time like maybe they uh, maybe they cover their hair or maybe they don't uh, wear any beards or or maybe they only use certain materials or maybe they use breeding masks so that that sort of thing mm -hmm. again specifics can vary uh, okay we've got a message from Claire she says I was thinking Sentinel de Strava yes uh, straight Sentinel uh, Law loves it <laughs> <laughs> I love it <laughs> <laughs> yes 
This sounds uh, sounds perfect. Yes. <laughs> we're approved, one hundred percent. Of course, now this message didn't go through. Come on, before she changes anything. <laughs> Oh wow, why have been the internet all of a sudden? Oh no, the internet! Oh, Discord, come on. Oh, okay, it went, it went through, sweet. Yay! It's time to head out the strata. That's, that's hardcore, I love that. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> So these would be the people uh, who interact with Scribe and Nali. Uh, as for languages, hmm. Here's what I can tell you about the uh, Ekurana's population uh, right now. Uh, so I'm thinking that the initial oh, I need to move. Uh, the initial expedition uh, race for a, uh, a communi comes a blip. <laughs> no, noisy, 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 noisy. Okay, I think I'm better now. <coughs> So I'm thinking the initial expedition uh, who went out there uh, had several members, like countries wise, and it wasn't like any single country's single endeavor. Instead, it was like a co op, uh, co op mission of various. Uh, different partners from uh, various corners uh, of the world. Uh, so the Estonian component uh, was just one of many. Uh, although they they were able to uh, establish a certain group identity and uh, uh, preserve a whole uh, deliberately preserve. Uh, a very distinct culture, maybe even assimilating uh, some others. Uh, but uh, uh, in in addition to them, uh, there for sure there would be uh, some uh, West African influence, because that's what I have used in uh, in the names. Uh, then maybe we can have some Italians in there yeah. <laughs> because this gives us excuse to throw in some Italian phrases uh, then uh, there there would be uh, some your component in there or, or Slavic component but it wouldn't be as strong as it is in the uh, your home world so it's like they, there would be, there, there would be uh, relations and knowledge uh, between uh, the peoples of Ekurana and the peoples of Yur, uh, but uh, it's it's more like a distant relative thing. So simi similar to the uh, bad relatives coming to coming to jail <laughs> kind of thing, but like very varying relations. Mm. But thinking back to the old earth language and location influences, uh, maybe some Australians in the mix or a Kiwi. Yeah. So it's like I, I, I want a mix of people uh, to have been part of the initial expedition, and those different peoples, of course, had their quote-unquote nation stock uh, of colonists and some of those influences would would be preserved while some others might have been assimilated
Spice, spice might. Spice might. Uh, <laughs> and that, I had a note that this uh, this list of potential expedition partners is not final. Like it's it's an open list. Also, add note that uh, we might have to name the bigger moon of Fekurana because right now I haven't named it. <laughs> and of of course, it could be that any any one thing that can have a name can have other names. So it might be that uh, the name that we come up with. Uh, is not the same name as I might use in in my stories, but it might be uh, close to it, or it might be a version of it. So, so there is that. Uh, and now I forgot why where I started. <laughs> All right, this is West Drive, and Ollie are headed. Mm -hmm. to track down, down their, their first, first name, their first, first lead, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't, doesn't go, go well. Mm -hmm. So yes, ocean people and uh, and coast people. Nice. And as far as as far as uh, as the people who live uh, and work live and all work on the planet side uh, of the bigger moon as far as they know the uh, further side is like hostile and not uh, not useful <laughs> so they say like oh nobody really goes there there might only be some uh, some research outposts and 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 maybe some scrapyards or wreckages, but but not not much else. And don't write this down, but uh, just a, as a sort of uh, reminder note that in this particular reality, uh, or in in this. Uh, uh, chain of events the uh, uh, the d -d 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 base camp story never happened okay. Okay. intriguing yes <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, I think I think I have depleted a bunch of words. <laughs> <laughs> I feel my brains just sort of went uh, went limp for a little bit. <laughs> I think what in KD two, one of the Cardafars of Flotillas is going to pass through Ekarana, so mm -hmm. we need to figure out some bits and pieces there. I am making it the thing. Yeah, yeah man. It, it seems, it seems, seems from all of this, it seems like, like it's a place that's, that's going to pop up quite, quite regularly, I think, and I have no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have worked out how it works, and I'm personally invested in it, so mm -hmm. I'm going to draw it in, and if some other author comes along who has uh, a similarly strong idea about another place, and is able to establish that place, then they can push that other place. <laughs> what I like most about this is the fact that, uh, that you have established a place in this shared universe mm -hmm. and it's now becoming part of more and more stories. Like it's solidifying it, it's making it more and more real, mm -hmm. which I really like, I think that's all. You've created the character, but the, the character is a system. <laughs> Indeed. I like, I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got anything else to add. So yeah. I don't think. And I think I'm gonna wrap up this recording before I go on a very long tangent which has nothing <laughs> to do with this. Uh, so 
let's leave the tensions for another time. Uh, stopping recording now.